It's an interesting question um, because I, I think the answer is everybody gains from it and, and it will change everything. Um, and it's one of those um, movements where um, the consumer actually has a greater grip on um, what is um, driving the industry than businesses do. And actually businesses are running to catch up with their, with their customers in this one in terms of how they want to deal and interact um, with businesses. and. You know, a big established business with lots of systems and processes and so on finds it much more difficult to adapt those systems and processes to what consumers want today. So I think it's going to change everything. Um, it's going to change how we um, how we provide healthcare. Um, you know, providing healthcare in the home is better for um, patients, better patient outcome, and substantially cheaper. Um, and it will change how we educate our children. Um, and I think you can, you can see, that, you know, I, I dropped my daughter off at her first day of secondary school um, today, and I think of her going into a school that probably is far less technologically advanced than her home. So, you know, I think it's going to change everything, and I think it's one of those movements where what's happening in people's homes is, is in advance of what's happening in the business community and elsewhere. I mean, I, I'm, probably, I'm probably less negative on this one than a, a lot of people would be, um, because I think, th I think there are two, um, two elements to it. Um, first of all is businesses getting connected on, in this northwest coast of, of Europe. It's a, you know, a, an island that has had huge disadvantages in so many respects, um, given our geographic location. Um, all of a sudden, doesn't have those disadvantages in a connected world, because it, it matters less where you are. Um, and I think if you look at the networks that we have in the country connecting our businesses, um, our larger businesses, they're actually quite good. Um, investments that would be made, you know, companies like BT, um, other telecommunications companies um, such as Vodafone, UPC, um, have made very substantial large investments in Ireland to connect businesses. And you know, BT is one of three of the largest global fixed telecommunications companies. And having an organization like that here in Ireland connecting to our global network is a huge advantage for the country. Where the disadvantage comes is in broadband um, and connecting smaller businesses and our homes. And we are not where the rest of um, Europe is going at this point in time. A um, lot, of, lot of great work has been done um, by the Next Generation Broadband Task Force. Um, and I know the Minister is very ambitious in terms of what he wants to achieve. Um, but we do need to catch up, and we do need to catch up quickly. Um, we need to improve the quality, the speed, and also the cost that broadband is available um, here in Ireland. And I think you know, the, the, um, the implications of us not doing that would mean that Ireland misses a massive opportunity, which is to take a leading place in this, um, in, in this globally connected world. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. Again, good news, I think, is that a lot of the backbone network is in place. And we've certainly gone through a massive upgrade of our core backbone um, network. To, and in, in preparation for this, we, we could see this coming. And, and you know, the mobile operators would be very substantial customers of ours, as well as our own business customers, and we could see that demand um, demand coming, which um, had us make the investment. I think what we often forget is um, that for a wireless connection, it all ends up on fiber somewhere, and you've got to get fiber far enough out into the network in order to be able to deliver those um, significant speeds. And even when you look at um, technologies like um, 4G, um, which is, is delivering um, you know, almost super fast speeds of connectivity. Um, even with those, you, you're talking about a higher density of, um, of tower sites to deliver that and the geographic disadvantages that we have in Ireland. So I don't think the solution is simple and straightforward. 
um, and it will be about setting priorities um, at, a, at, a, um, at a national level. And that's not just about the government, um, that's about what we as citizens consider to be a priority. And I think we do need to um, prioritise connectivity as uh, you know, a, almost a natural resource and, and make the funding available so that we don't have a, a, um, a society that's disconnected, that we have one that's connected and that we can really benefit from the opportunities that the connected, um, the ne connected society that we, na we now live in delivers for Ireland. In many respects, Ireland is already a hub for digital uh, media with um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Google, um, all present here, all the, all the big names are present here. And you look at the reputation that we've achieved in, um, for example, the animation um, world and that creation of, of, of digital content. Um, so there's lots of the building blocks here to be successful. Um, the, the, the key things that you've got to, um, you've got to deliver as a, as a country to take that on to the next level, to truly become not just uh, um, a place where those companies establish themselves, but potentially creating our own companies who do those, um, deliver those types of services, and also then becoming, as you say, the destination go-to place for digital content. You need people, first and foremost. And you know, certainly our education system produces innovative, bright young people. We're not producing enough of them with the um, skills that are required by, by companies today, and that has to be, um, has to be um, addressed. I think one of the things that we often um, don't credit ourselves for is it's actually quite a nice place to come and live. So when you're convincing people to come and live and work somewhere, um, coming out of their um, own country from uh, across the rest of the world, it's actually quite an easy place to convince people to come and work and live because it is a pleasant place to come and work and live. I think we have to continue to do that but also potentially look at the visa situation and how we make it just easier to get those skill sets in that we need. The second thing that you need is the infrastructure to support the, um, those businesses when they're here and actually I think we're in a very good position on that. I think um, through the Celtic Tiger years, through the, um, the establishment of large-scale multinationals, we've actually built quite a good infrastructure here. You know, data centers, um, networks, connected to global networks, a lot of those are here and um, ready to be um, deployed in, in, the, in, in, that, in, that kind of, in that kind of business. So I think if you look at the two things you need, people and infrastructure, we're probably very well equipped from an infrastructure perspective. Um, we probably have greater challenges but a lot going for us on the people side.